Welcome in to the Cubs Recap Podcast here on YouTube and anywhere you find the audio version of your podcast with my partner Gordon Wittenmeyer at GW Cub on Twitter. I'm David Kaplan and you can get me at the Catman on Twitter and on Instagram. We are right here in my home studio. That's right. Ready the to recap. go. The recap. The recap. Let's talk about the season opening series. Cubs take the opener of the season. They lose the next two. They got drilled because some guy I never heard of was in the bullpen giving up a ton of runs. Merriweather. We'll get to that in a minute. <laughs> That's funny because please... I was in the clubhouse saying the same thing. Who, Who is, is that, that guy? guy? Is that guy on the team? Yeah. We'll get to that. Can you explain to me on a team with a pretty substantial payroll, a team that spent $300 million in the offseason, how is our right fielder, I know say is hurt, Miles Mastroboni playing in right field? That's the Italian beef guy, right? I think so. Yeah, well, he played like it. I mean, that ball that fell on Saturday? Right. Lay out. If it goes by you, it goes by you. Give the effort. I hated that he pulled up because he's not a right fielder. Not only that, but if you didn't notice this, you're really going to hate this. He was put in for defense. He was a late-inning defensive replacement. Right. He started opening day. Yeah. Even David Ross, when he met the media, said... Yeah, my plan wasn't to have Master Bodhi in right field, but it is what it is. Yeah, that to me, that's a guy that's not used to Wrigley Field. You remember uh, 2007, Mark DeRosa's first yeah. homestand? Uh-huh. Do you remember the ball? That, you know, it's, it's, it's a night game in April at Wrigley, and the winds are weird, right? right Down cold. there in the bowl. And a ball goes up. It looks like a sure foul ball. It's going to land in the stands. He gives up on it. I can't remember if it landed just fair or just foul, but it came all the way back to the field, and he'd given up on it, and it hit the ground. I'm pretty sure it went, went for a hit, but I remember him just being stunned, and I remember that being a story of that game. But that was a guy that had never played there before. Correct. And this strikes me as that, right? I mean, that ball's going nowhere if he lays out and doesn't catch it. It's just going to stay right there. Correct, because it was a little dying quail. Yeah, so... And it turns out it hung up. He could have got it. Cap, you might have got it. And, you know, I don't often Maybe. suggest things like that. But, <laughs> uh, yeah, it, it was embarrassing, and it cost him the game. I mean, but you know what else cost him the game? The reason that they lost two out of three to the Brewers. They only scored one run in that game. Correct. So They scored five on Sunday, but they were down nine to two. Right. They had right. opportunities. So, you know, they're not using their same bullpen guys. And I think Devin Williams might have been down for a day. He was down. He got that line yeah, shot yeah, off got, his arm. On Very fortunate that he didn't shatter an elbow there. But watching the game on Thursday, they beat Corbin Burns. Right. That's a good quality win. No doubt. You're winning one to nothing. You put Javier Assad in in the seventh. I had no problem. There were other people going, right. why did you right. take Justin Steele down? He was at 80-some pitches. He, it's cold. It's th- game that's the script. two of 162. Six innings, scoreless, first start of the year, April. Assad it's- did his job in the seventh. Ross elected to go back to him in the eighth because it was the bottom of the order, and he had navigated the seventh effectively. Would you have done that? Uh, yeah. Yeah, they're a little short-handed in the bullpen anyway. Mm-hmm. And Assad pitched in the WBC. Mm-hmm. He competitive. He's pitched more competitive innings than anybody in that bullpen. Correct. And he did great. And he is a guy that can go multiple innings. Remember, this was a guy in the fifth starter battle mm-hmm. at one point. So, so there's no reason he can't go two innings. There's none, none on the face of the and earth. Face in the bottom of the order. Innings. I was di- actually surprised. The Brewers lineup is not as fearsome as I thought it might be. Their pitching is really good. I didn't think it was going to be fearsome. I thought it might just be a tick better than last year because Adamas is for real. You know, Yelich still draws walks and still has an on-base percentage. Um, Rowdy Telez is, is, is a nice hitter. They've got a nice lineup. Uh, they don't have a fearsome. I never thought they were a fearsome lineup. The Cardinals have a fearsome lineup. They have a very good lineup. Um, They're the best team in the division, clearly, for me. Yeah, I mean, the Brewers clearly have the best pitch. But, you know, best overall team, the, the team with the most areas where, where they're really good, that's the Cardinals. Okay, so we had Mastroboni in right field, then we've seen the, the offense isn't great. 
Matt Mervis, I know it's one weekend. We got to let this play out. God, Jesus, here you go. God damn. How soon? And they're going to get Otani at the deadline too, right? I'm hoping we get Come him on, by May 1st. Come but on. at what point will they consider bringing Matt Mervis up, A? B, at what point will they bring Morell up? He's off to a quick start this weekend. It's not like this team is blessed with veteran guys you're like, who won an MVP last year? We got a bunch of like, you know, this is take a barely. This is barely not April Fool's Day. But you're making it sound an awful damn lot like April Fool's Day. The season isn't even a week old, man. Let some things play out. Well, none, of these, about, none of these players have played more than one team yet. But I'm talking about roster construction. I think okay. Chris Morrell should be on the team ahead of Nick Madrigal. Well, that was a that's an opening day decision. Next next decision time on that's a month into the season, maybe six weeks, depending on if you have injuries in the With meantime. With this schedule, you could be buried in six weeks. With this roster, you can be buried in six weeks. That's the point. Whether Morell's on it or not. Rangers, Padres, Dodgers. Yeah, but twice. you don't you you don't suddenly decide that the six month calendar doesn't matter because it's tough in the first month. It's going to be tough in other months too. Go take a look at the schedule. This Red series, you better win. You better win this series. And who's the other one? Uh, do they have the Pirates? There's only one other series in their first 25 games, and it's against a team that. On paper, they ought to maybe sweep. And I can't, I can't remember who the other team is. But they got the, they got the Dodgers twice. The Padres. They got the Padres at the end of that twenty-five game stretch, and they got the Rangers and the Mariners coming in. Now, fortunately for them, they don't see Degrom unless something weird happens with the schedule, uh, and they don't see Robbie Ray because he just went on the the IL for the Mariners. So they might catch a break because of. When they happen to catch the Rangers, those are good teams. And, and catch, but they're still good teams. They're good teams with, with some bats too. Okay, Stroman was great, opening day. Yeah, he wasn't Dylan Cease level great, but he was really good. No doubt, no doubt. They got really good pitching out Steel. of Justin Steele. Steele was six inning shutout baseball. I, I like both those starts. What did you think of the Jamison Tyone start? Meh. Nah. Yeah. Not nothing. Yeah, yeah, I completely agree. And, he had an opportunity to make a couple big pitches yeah. and big spots to get out of innings and couldn't do it. But see, this is now, again, first series of the year. So take that for what it's worth. Jacob deGrom got rocked early in his start, his mm-hmm. debut for the Rangers. So again, take that for what it's worth. But you went second tier adding pitching this year in, in, in free agency. And, and, and it's pretty good. I mean, it's pretty good second tier. But you didn't go out and get Rodon, who's on the I.L. You didn't go get DeGrom, who got beat around in his first start. You didn't go get uh, uh, Verlander, who's on the I.L. Right. Okay, so, but those were the top guys, right? Um, and I'm so, not, not to say they made the wrong decision, but this is what you get. I mean, Tyon, next time out, might be lights out. But this is, you're going to get, you know, a three-starter out of him, um, which is fine. Look. They have to do, in order for this team to win, we saw the recipe, whether you like it or not, on opening day. You got good starting pitching that gave you a lead through six innings. You got enough bullpen to hold them late. But you only scored in one inning of that game. True. Um, You only scored one run on Saturday. And you didn't get anything more than a single in that inning in terms of extra bases or anything like that. You got, I believe, a couple of walks and, and an error. Did get a home run out of Ian Happ on Saturday, two out of wisdom right? on Sunday. Right. And, and the Ian Happ home run was the only run of the game. This is what this offense is. At it, least in this climate and this weather. Okay. I'll give you that. But on paper, that's what this lineup is regularly. That's how it projects out uh, on a given day. Um, maybe, I mean, it was against Corbin Burns when they scored in the one inning and got enough runs to win the game. So, so good on them. But uh, maybe later in the season they score two runs on Burns at two different innings or three runs over, over, over two different innings. But that's how they're going to score. They're going to take extra bases. When they get a guy on first, they're going to have to take third base if somebody well, follows they were the aggressive single. against Burns. Ball got away. Boom, here comes Nico no Horner. But, but guess what? Other teams are aggressive too, right? 20, 21 for 23 was what the league did on opening – Opening day? Yes, that's correct. On steals. On steals. Um, so 
that's the impact we're seeing. We're already seeing teams all across baseball running a lot and being successful. And seeing at a pitchers high and hitters trying to deal with this pitch clock. Yes. Which I love the pitch clock. I, I do too. But but just to just to make your point, like so, oh, so they're gonna run more. They're gonna take advantage of that. Good. But everybody is. They don't have a lineup that matches up with the top half in the league, honestly. Probably. Correct. And, right and so now. they have to pitch and they have to lean really, really hard on the improvements they made with their fielding group. Um, and so far, pretty much, but, but we saw a Master Boney on Saturday, and that's exactly what I'm talking about. For this team to win, that catch has to be made by whoever you put out Jason there. Jason Hayward makes that catch. Oh, no doubt. Easy. Um, I'm trying to think what right fielders we've seen of recent vintage who don't make that catch. Right? Not very many. I mean, if you played at Wrigley and you, you know the ball is going to hang up there, that particular ball in, on that particular day. Okay. So let's talk about Dansby Swanson. Mm-hmm. What was Five, he? 583. Yeah. What was he? Four for a billion in spring training. And yeah. everyone was like, oh boy, I don't know. Hit a know. couple home runs hit late. Yeah. Like, like finished with a couple home runs. And then all of a sudden he jumps off to. Seven hits, the most by a Cub in his in his Cubs yeah. debut ever. Seven hits in the first three games. In the first three games, yeah. He was five for his first six, I want to say. Like, like he, he lined out and then got four or five straight hits over two games. And then uh, was in the running for player of the week. So, nice. One of them was an extra base hit. And uh, I can't remember. He's, oh, and he had that uh, amazing play. Uh, the one in the short left field was he, incredible. Yeah. Now, he, had, he knew who was running the bases, too. But nonetheless, man, he got rid of that as fast as he could, skipped it over there, and, and got the out. That was a great play. That, so that was entertaining. we saw Patrick Wisdom in right field. Mm-hmm. And he threw a guy out. I think Wisdom would have made that catch. He might have. Why is Wisdom not at third base? Because of the Edwin Rios? Parts. Because of the That's a thing? Parts. You got to get him some playing time. Um, they had you had Madrigal over there before. Where else, where the hell else are you going to put Madrigal these days? Okay, I know, I know, but this is part of the flaws of this lineup, right? They don't have that position accounted for. Look, the whole Craig Kimbrell trade. Kimbrell's no longer playing for the White Sox. Mm-hmm. Nick Madrigal does not look like he can play at this level, and Cody Hoyer's coming back from Tommy John. Nick Madrigal can play at this level, but he's arguably a one or one and a half to a guy at this level. He can hit. He can make contact and hit. He can hit singles. But he's not an everyday player on a good team. He's not. You know, I'm not going to argue with you on it. He's certainly not ahead of Nico Horner, no. who was picked. Who was twenty two picks same, behind him? Same draft, out of the same league, playing the same position. How about that? And and the one guy's picked what in the top five? Fourth. That was a. Dumbass pick. That was the White Sox took Nick Madrigal, and you go back and read the quotes because I've done it. They thought he was going to be like the face of their team. There is nothing that he's done or hasn't done since that you said, well, that shocks me. Because when he's been healthy, he hits. He's got a really good batting average when he hits. He doesn't field the ball great, and I'm not sure that that ever projected. Um, And... uh, he doesn't hit for power. That never projected. So I don't know what it was you were looking for that made him this high impact. The fourth five. overall pick. Yeah. yeah. So, okay, now they're off to play the Reds. They're one and two. We're taping this before the Monday night game. Drew Smiley, Drew Smiley will yeah. be on the hill. What are you expecting out of this team? Smiley to Wisniewski. I think that's a big start because it gets him off to a really good start in his major league career. He's been excellent in spring training. He was excellent in September last year. Uh, Because this is a series with, we just mentioned, Texas and the Dodgers twice and the Padres. You better make hay against teams you should beat. Right, like we we said, they're not going to get DeGrom, but the Rangers aren't going to get Stroman. And if we believe in Stroman like what we saw on opening day, then that's a big deal for the Cubs Mm -hmm. too. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta win this series against the Reds. But you know, 
I mean, it's April, whatever, third or something like that. You yeah, know, this is the fourth game of you gotta 162. Win. You got to win the series, all right? You got to win the series because your, your early schedule can bury you fast and create. You can fall behind in the first month given this schedule in the kind of way that takes you two months to catch up if things go right. Um, it's really hard to win Major League Baseball games. And if you put yourself in a big enough hole, you know, good luck, especially with this team that's not going to outslug anybody. you you got one recipe to consistently win games, and we saw it. And I'm not sure that can hold up consistently. We'll, we'll find out real fast. But you go into a place like Cincinnati with a young team that's going to have a lot of energy, there's guys that are going to try to prove themselves. And by the way, they got talent. It's just really young. Very young. Um, Hunter Green and guys like that. Okay, so Thursday, I'm in Wrigleyville. We did our radio show, Kappa J Hood Show, from Old Crow Smoke. Oh, yeah, I, I listened to some of that. So I text Jed Hoyer. Hey, man, any chance we could grab you? He you're always... He showed up. Not only did he comes on every year, every year, that dude, he's a great, great dude. Every year he comes to the remote. Or he does it on the phone. Mm-hmm. And he said, I might have to meet with the medical team, see where we're at coming out of spring. But I'll be on for sure, but it might be on the phone. Give me the call, uh, call-in numbers. At 8.54, we're having him at 9. I look up. He's standing there at the Old Crow Smokehouse. No security guards. No media relations person. Nobody walking him in. Just on his own. Hey, I'm here. Let's go. You're the why, best. Why, why, why would he need security? Why? I mean, he's trying to get where he's going. People are grabbing for pictures and autographs. Like, he's like a star in there. He's Jed Hoyer. He and Theo, man. Everyone wants to be around them. Jed is such Well, his a good star guy. rose a little bit with uh, the spending this last winter. Big time. And there hadn't been any games played yet. So, uh, so he, we'll shows, see what happens he shows up. He's the best. He sits down. We're talking about the team and the this. And you could tell he's. He said, we're on the edge of just starting to get where I think we can go to. He said, it's going to take time. We're not there yet, but I really like where we're at. You know, that's, that's fair. You know, for, for, the, for the executive trying to put this together, um, I give him credit for that because it'd be really easy to say, you know, we, we like our chances. You know, we're, he didn't we say expect that. to contend for the division title and all that crap. Um, when he met with us before the game a little while later it was the same thing that it was this this uh little reserved in, in his optimism mm-hmm. optimism optimism for the long run and a little bit held for this year okay so i said to him it looks to me from my seat hayward's money falls off the books after this year they're paying him his last uh, year is and it so tiny again jesus christ i think i got all you people out there coming mm. so we talked about what you need he said look we probably need would love to add a top of the rotation guy mm-hmm. everyone would love one and we'd like to add some thump mm-hmm. to our lineup i'm like i oh. got a guy for you now obviously he can't comment about a player on another team but he said we have done a really good job at keeping our powder dry and yes we will have the ability To play in the deep end of the pool next winter on a big-name player or two. Shohei, you got invited by Saya. It's time to come to Chicago. Do you know the money the organization would make? I don't care if you gave him $500 million. Do you have any idea the international amounts of money that are out there to be made? Yeah, he's making $70 million of it himself this year. 65, yeah. Right. The number one guy in baseball. 59 million, 59.3 million to Scherzer, 44.6 yeah. to Aaron Judge. I've done all the numbers. I've run all the analytics. There is, again, Steve Cohen can go, you're at 500. I'm at 600. Oh, you're at 610. I'm at 700. He could do that. Have you ever met Tom Ricketts? I have. When you talk about powder dry, when you talk about that much powder, that might as well be anthrax to these guys because they're not coming close to that. And you know it. You're the same guy in 2015 when I said to you, I think they're going to spend. No, they're not. And boom, here comes Jason Hayward. Here comes... After 2015? John Lester. You know what happened? 
See, what happened is I was right until Theo went to, uh, Theo went to business ops. He went to the owner and he went to Grevenkamp, who was the, the C, C, uh, CFO. Uh -huh. And uh, he promised that they would do two off seasons in one if you let him spend now and then he would make you money because they still had the bank covenants in play. From the sale. From the sale. That's correct. All the debt. So they had to cover it. They could not afford to pay this much and make this much because now those bank covenants would come into play. The penalties for not your revenue is not matching your spending. And they did make the money back. And Theo promised them they would. But when we did. talked, that wasn't in play. That happened during the offseason. Well, that happened literally between the GM meetings and the winter meetings. If this team at the end of the year, not today, not tomorrow, not after breakfast, end of the year, if they are 82 wins, 81 wins, whatever it is, and you go, boy, we could drop a top of the rotation guy who, will, by the way, four days a week is going to hit you home runs and be just an insane marketing draw. There is no scenario where they should not be able to sign him. None. Oh, they can if they want. They're not going anywhere near that kind of price tag. I mean, look how many three hundred million dollar contracts are out there. Right? I hope we're doing a podcast. The next Cubs, year. the Cubs, and I go, hey, have it. Shohei and his translator are joining us now on the Cubs Recap Podcast. That would be the greatest. You know what? If that happens, I mean, I'm not going to make. Let's see. What, what can I promise? You know what? I'll take my shirt off for a podcast. How about that? He's already done that. <laughs> <laughs> so they get the Reds after seeing three games. Do you still feel the same way you felt about this team when we recorded our season preview? You feel a little different? I think they're, uh, you know, and it's three games, so so I don't know. I'm like, I don't know if you're right, I don't know if I'm right. And you, same thing, vice versa, right? It's you only picked three how games. many wins? Right around when Vegas was picking. Something in the 70s. Yeah, I said 82 Mid-70s, and upper 70s. Um, I still feel the same way. I think what we saw these first three days backs up the, the skepticism, and I, I'm not saying like a ton of skepticism, I mean the, the mild skepticism. Like they, they, they had to spend $300 million to put, to, to put a feasible major league team on the field because they, they had so few real players. They did. So will Matt Mervis come up at some point this yes. year? And if he does, will he perform at the level we'd like to see? I don't know. Will he have grown? I don't know. And by the way, if he did... I'm not sure that makes him any better than maybe an average lineup because there's a lot of really great players out there, a lot of really great hitters that are nowhere near the Cubs lineup. So that's just the way it is. They got some pretty good pitching and some really good fielders. Um, they've got some nice bullpen arms. Uh, one of them's not in the bullpen right now. He's on the I.L., uh, Brandon Hughes. They got no lefties out and there. And Cody Hoyer hasn't come back. And yet. Cody Hoyer hasn't come back. Those two guys come back, and they, and they come back like we've seen them pitch before. Oh, now you're talking about something at the end of the games, but you still have a pretty good rotation that's not a not, not one of the best. Well, this guy, Merriweather, my patience is Who, already... Who's this guy now? Julian didn't, Merriweather. Wait a minute. He, is that, he fought for the heavyweight title, didn't he? No, that's Mayweather. That's Floyd Mayweather. Oh. Julian Merriweather was awful on Saturday. Sunday. Awful. Yeah. I'm at the Bulls game and we're streaming the game on my phone and my son's got the Sox game on the other one. We're watching all this in the United Center. And I'm like, what is going on here? Who is this guy? I cover the team. I don't know who he is. Doesn't that, doesn't that tell you what you need to know? I mean, you still, are you still picking 85 wins? I said 82. Or whatever. He also said Shohei Otani. I get it mixed up. We'll see. All hey, right. uh, the pace of play thing, uh -huh. right? You saw it. Stroman was the first guy to violate. Uh, Correct. Did you see what he guy. said? Tell me. He said, uh, he said, um, it's fine. He, he was fine with it uh, in, in that moment, and he, and he recovered really quick. But he said, yeah, I find myself watching that clock constantly. And he says, I got I to gotta make sure that... Well, there was I'm a guy not... in second when he got it. 
Which means that he had 20 seconds, not 15. Correct. Right. And, and so, but he's watching the clock and he's got to make sure it doesn't get in his head where it's rushing him. And he's got a, he's got a whole pre-pitch routine sometimes where he likes to take some time to breathe and he's not able to, right? So he thinks this is going to be tough for a lot of guys around the league. And then we saw what happened to that dude for Cleveland in Seattle in the opener reliever, uh, Karen check. Yeah. James Karen. Yeah. And he's got a whole pre-pitch thing that he had to adjust to. And the fans picked up on that right away and started counting down the clock on him on every pitch. Scott service said it made a difference. It got in his head. He threw a wild pitch. Uh, I think he wound up giving up the home run. He at least put a bunch of guys on base and they wound up losing the game. The only run scored in the game. Carlos Carrasco's first pitch of the season. He had a violation. Yeah. Right. And so, so it's interesting to see they've shaved a half hour off games through the first four days of the season, which is great. The pace is great. And I think on average, you're going to see the performances, league average will stay about the same, but it's going to be interesting to see which pitchers really have a hard time with My this. friend Tracy, Tracy has season tickets. She goes to games with her friends, and she hangs out and loves, loves baseball. And I talked to her that night. She's like, I didn't like this pitch clock. I go down to pick up a beer, and I come back, and half an inning's over. I'm like, Tracy? Quicker. Got to be quicker. I love it. Buy the beer from the vendor. Just stay in your seat. Can't get the craft beer from the vendor. You drink craft beer at a bar? I don't drink bar. I don't drink beer. But a lot of people do. Well, that's their problem then. That's the problem. Not the pitch clock. Who's a diehard baseball fan? Goes to every Friday home game once the weather warms up. Craft beer. Craft fucking beer at a ball game. Jesus Christ. That's the problem, man. You know, pace of play is not the problem. My guy. All right. A lot of fun. All right, man. For Gordon, I'm Cap. This is another edition of the Cubs Recap Podcast, available right here on our Recap YouTube channel and anywhere you get the audio version of your favorite podcast. We appreciate you subscribing. Please smash that like button. The algorithm's going nuts. Take that.